Anne of Cleves is today considered the lucky fourth wife of King Henry VIII, as she managed to escape with her life, and did not meet her end at the blade of a sword or an axe. She was awarded a handsome amount of land and wealth in the annulment settlement to the Tudor king, and she was even given Hever Castle, the former house of Anne Boleyn. She was relatively comfortable following the death of Henry VIII, and she was the longest living wife of him. She even lived longer than his heir, Edward VI, and would have a close relationship with Mary I, or Bloody Mary, when she came onto the throne. But when she died in 1557, she was given a large funeral, and she was entombed inside of a tomb which today has been described as somewhat hard to find, and today it can be easily missed. What is the story of this? On the 16th of July 1557, Anne of Cleves died from what is mostly believed to have been cancer. She was ill for a number of months, and she had shortly before dictated her will. She made sure that the members of her household, whom she was very fond of, were looked after, and were given payment after her death. Anne also bequeathed some jewels to Mary I and to Princess Elizabeth, the future Elizabeth I, her two stepdaughters. She also asked the two to employ some of her servants inside of their households, and she was considered a very generous woman, who was very loyal to her servants. She was a queen who never had the chance to show her good qualities, and her kind side and nature. But this was noted even whilst Henry VIII was married to her. The king may not have valued her looks, but he did enjoy her gentle and calm side. As mentioned, she was handsomely rewarded with a large amount of residences, and she would die inside of one of these homes, Chelsea Manor. She died a year before the death of Mary I, and the ascension of Queen Elizabeth I, but Anne was to be buried at Westminster Abbey, at the heart of English religion, and also near to where the heart and founders of the Tudor dynasty were interred in a vault. She had a large funeral, and she was a queen and a European princess. It was said of that, On the third day of August, my Lady Anne of Cleves, sometime wife to Henry VIII, came from Chelsea to be buried in Westminster, with all the children of Westminster, and many priests and clerks, and the monks of Westminster, and my Lord, Bishop of London, and my Lord, Abbot of Westminster, rode together. Many of the prominent politicians of the time attended, and there were one hundred torches burning that were carried by her servants. The funeral procession was large and massive, and she was then taken into Westminster Abbey, where her tomb had been prepared, and her coffin was then placed into this. Her body was also interred with a cloth of gold laid over her, and following this, the officers of her household broke their staves of office, symbolising their duty was over and done with, and they then threw these into the tomb. Her funeral had been conducted according to the Catholic rites that she wanted, and her tomb lies on the south side of the high altar. The monument is a low stone structure of three sections, and it shows beautiful carvings displaying the initials AC with a crown, lion's head, and skulls and crossbones on it. It's believed that the tomb was made by Theodore Haves of Cleves, but that it was never finished. Today, as mentioned, the tomb is very easy to miss, and it is actually quite difficult to spot inside of Westminster Abbey. We would expect that the tomb of a Tudor queen would be large and garish with a huge monument on. This is what is shown on Elizabeth I's tomb, or a Mary Queen of Scots, with a huge effigy of them placed above where their bodies are laid to rest. Her tomb is actually located within the area of Sanctuary, a very quiet and religious part of the Abbey, and it's here where the coronation service takes place when new monarchs are appointed. Part of her tomb can be seen from the back, and the inscription, Anne of Cleves, Queen of England, born 1515, died 1557, can be seen and read from the transept. But, as the coronation takes place in sanctuary, this is off-limits to the public, and today is not accessible, meaning half of her tomb has been lost. Also, what doesn't help is that many other memorials obscure Anne of Cleves' tomb, as it is opposite Edward the Confessor's tomb, it is also rather overshadowed. She is buried, though, within the same walls and confines as her father and mother-in-law, whom she never met. 
but also the two stepdaughters she had, Mary and Elizabeth. But what is interesting is that during the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II, Anne of Cleves' tomb was actually built over temporarily to make sure that the Queen Mother could view the coronation of her daughter, Queen Elizabeth II, on a stand during the huge ceremony. This means that, in a sense, Anne's tomb was desecrated by modern building work temporarily. When we have visited Westminster Abbey, we couldn't actually find Anne's tomb and resting place. Now, what is fascinating about Anne of Cleves, though, is the fact she remained in England when she really did not need to. She could have returned home following the death of Henry VIII, but she remained in England. Despite being a Queen of England for just a matter of months, she could have been buried back in her homeland, or in Dusseldorf in Germany, or possibly where she was born and a chapel near there. However, today in Westminster Abbey, her tomb is forgotten and is easy to miss, but she was buried at the heart of English religion, and the most elaborate and ornate abbey and church across the land, showing how important she actually was. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.